welcome back to DC today. Uh, Brian Seitel here with you. It is February 23rd um, here on this kind of holiday shortened week. And we had uh, an ultimately an up day in the market. Uh, we closed up about 111 points, um, but that was uh, after about a 500 point range. We um, started out up uh, right up first half hour of trading. We we're probably up about 220, 225, 225 points in the morning. Um, and then we had something like a negative 250 print by about uh, two o'clock or so Eastern uh, before recovering into the close. And I'll, I'll kind of go through some of the data that we had today as to as to why we, we saw that trading range. Um, but the bond market was slightly higher um, today. Rates were a little bit lower, but not a lot. We're talking a couple of basis points. Um, the one thing I'll note in the bond market is that well, we've had uh, the Fed minutes released this week and kind of a lot of noise around interest rates and where Fed is going to take, you know, Fed funds rate and all of this stuff. If you look at the yield curve, so short term rates versus long term rates, we're technically more inverted now than we were at the start of the week, um, which to me really just speaks to, you know, shorter term inflation expectations are a little higher. So interest rates go up on the short end of the curve and longer term, you know, we're still pretty anchored towards basically a pretty indebted world. And so rates rates on the lower end, uh, sorry, on the longer end are, are uh, down on the week a little bit. But for all that was talked about, you know, for uh, this Fed minutes being released and interest rates moving, frankly, they didn't really move all that much this week. The market had pretty well already priced in um, a terminal Fed funds rate of something like five and a quarter. Um, I take that as, as good. I, I like that the market has, has kind of gotten it right, in my opinion, as far as where rates are going to go. Um, some, some couple of, uh, economic points on the day we had initial jobless claims for the week come in a little lighter than expected. We were looking at something like 197, we got 192. Um, and we also had continuing claims. Uh, so people on unemployment basically come in less than expected by almost 50,000, something like 1.65 versus 1.7 million. Those are good things. I mean, the, I know the media points out, um, that it's, the good news is bad, you know, so that the Fed will lower interest rates or cut rates at some point. And, and I'm, I guess I'm, I understand that. But um, but I mean, we want people to have jobs. That, that's how this economy works. That's why we get positive GDP. So, you know, I'm all for having some of these numbers come out be better than expected. And I don't necessarily know if it makes a huge difference to me or or what we do at, at the Bonson Group, if they're going to raise rates by another 25 basis points or, or 50 basis points because of, of, uh, of a good economy. Um, there was a revision today on Q4 GDP, um, a final revision, and it was a little less than expected. So um, came in two tenths of a percent to 2.7 percent versus a 2.9 percent original expectation for GDP in the fourth quarter. There's some seasonality with that, uh, obviously holidays and things. So, so they have to kind of go back and forth where where those numbers come in. The biggest negative attribution for the change lower was uh, consumer spending, um, and uh, and so that kind of brought brought things in. They lowered it by about a point inside of that number, but still, you know, a two and a half or, or call it two point seven uh, print for GDP and an expected something similar for Q one is is not bad. Not a bad economy. That's a good economy, you know, relatively speaking. <laughs> um, the other number that was out, um, there was a, uh, an inflation number, a PCE, core PCE, which is personal consumption expenditure outside of food and energy. So, so stripping those out was increased by four tenths of a percent. It's at 4.3%. Um, so it, it speaks to basically what we already, or what we spoke about earlier um, after the Fed minutes, which is economic activity that was deemed to be moving lower isn't, it's looking pretty good. Um, for the most part, um, but inflation is still kind of sticking around a little bit. And so that, that's going to keep the Fed on on watch and probably keeping those rates up or about where they are, maybe a little bit higher before the end of the year. Um, there was um, some, I have some some data on, uh, on real estate in here. We peaked um, last year at about 48, a little less, 47.7 trillion. Um, and uh, we're down by about 5% year over year. 
um, which is about down 2.3 trillion. So in dollar terms, you know, it's the lar- it's it's one of the largest years uh, of, of, of value in real estate decline um, since 2008, which was, of course, the financial crisis. But just keep in mind, that's after a pretty big run up, both in absolute values in dollar terms um, and percentage gains over the past, you know, call it two, two, three years. Um, there is a chart that I have in there. Um, which caught my eye today, uh, which is just this, you know, the U.S. dollar um, moving, which was moving lower now for six months or, or maybe not quite six months. It's been moving lower now for several months, we'll call it, say a quarter. And part of that is because rates have moved so far so fast. It was deemed the economy, economic activity would slow down, slower economic activity, lower GDP equals weakening currency. And that started to reverse here and fairly meaningfully uh, into 2023. Um and, uh, and, and the reason is that capital around the world flows where it's most rewarded. And so the U.S. is um, the rates on in our treasury market, in our in our currency are higher than the rest of the world. And so money is going to come out of things or want to come out of things like JGBs or yen, you know, out of Japan and come into the U.S. dollar and the treasuries where it can get four. And in some cases on the short end, five percent. Um, so you get an increase in currency because of that reason. In relative terms to other economies, the U.S. is also, frankly, in better shape. You know, the, the economy is is quite robust here. And, and uh, while Europe has surprised a little to the upside recently, which was counterintuitive, at least for me, um, a lot of the rest of the world is, is fairly mixed bag. And, and I think closer to their, their terminal rate uh, versus us, which I think will end up you know, going a few more rate hikes than some of the other countries. So, again, that moves currency a little bit. Um, let's see what else I've got here. Um, so we talked a good amount, a uh, good, a good amount about some of the fed minutes earlier in the week, and I'll leave that be, um, you know, for what it's worth, there was an interview on CNBC today with, uh, with Jamie Dimon, um, uh, who, who markets pay attention to, you know, it's, it's a real big money center bank he's running there. And uh, he talked about that he didn't have his recession book out yet. He still thinks there can be a soft landing for whatever that's worth. It's another soft landing kind of guy. Um, I did have a, a comment on the Q&A session that I got. I think the question was uh, yesterday or the day before um, about this term no landing. So we've talked about we've spoken about the soft landing narrative. We kind of get that, which is the porridge is just right. The Fed could interest, increase interest rates. The economy doesn't go into recession, but inflation goes right back to 2%. And then off we go again, and the next business cycle is extended. The hard landing, obviously, is the opposite of that, which is that you know they raise rates too far, too fast. The economy slows down too fast. We actually do go into contraction, into recession. And, um, uh, and, and that's how we get to our 2% target on Fed funds. The no landing is like the interim of those two things, in my opinion. But it's basically just that the Fed increases interest rates, but inflation doesn't go down and the economy continues to expand. Um, and that's that's not where we are. I mean, inflation has come down, so, so it's, you can't argue against that. Um, I don't know that it's come down as much as uh, everybody would like it to see it come down, but it has come down. And uh, and so we're on that right right path. And I think ultimately, whether we get a soft or a hard landing, the no landing is just the middle point between those two things. So I, I think it's a bit unhelpful that the media has used that term so much, frankly. But that was the answer to that question. Kind of the last comment I'll make, just because, again, if, if you're watching media news, um, you know, th- this comes up a lot. But the equity risk premium, which is basically just the earnings yield minus the 10 year treasury in the market to kind of give you a value of the market separate than like a P.E. ratio um, to kind of see historically where we are. Yeah, it's, it's showing the lowest number since we've gotten since the financial crisis. Yes, uh, part of that is because we've got, you know, a, a treasury that has gone up quite a bit and frankly doubled uh, over the past 12 months. And so that, you know, minus part on, on that equation is, is pulling those numbers down. But I would point out if you look at all the sectors, so that's the market. But then if you peel it out and you look at each individual sector, the energy sector really does still offer that you know, better, you know, risk reward skew to, to most other sectors by big factor, uh, two to three X, most of the others. Um, and I guess my comment to that is just that we've seen energy trade in this range. Um, you know, it was around 75 today it closed. And, and I don't know that that's necessarily a bad number. You know, 
I view it as the porridge is just right, which is that it's come down. And so from an inflation standpoint, that's a good thing because that's a big input cost for most of us and most people and the economy. But it's hanging, hanging in there in this nice range where it's still very profitable. And, uh, and so we still find value in the sector, uh, even though it has it has run. It was up last year and it's up this year as well. Um, uh, but but all that said, I appreciate you being with me. It's been fun the last couple three days to be with you. I know David is is uh, enjoying his family trip out there and and, uh, and the Bahamas, and and I know he's excited to be back and get with you on DC. Sorry, Dividend Cafe tomorrow, and then back with you on DC today on Monday. Um, but with that, I'll sign off and let you get back to your evenings. It's been fun. Reach out with questions. I I really do appreciate all of them as always, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Mm-hmm.